Welcome back to an inability to distinguish crystals from gems. Going into Night Town, you all voted, finally, as one, pretty much, to take the Ladybug. A nice and easy way to start some of the hardest levels in the game. Cool. When the game says nice and easy, it means the ladybug controls pretty much exactly like the marble. It, uh, it's a little bit slower in some respect, but it is basically the marble. You wouldn't notice the difference too much. Oh, this music is on. I like this level a lot more than the first hexagon of fear. It's, uh, it's more varied and it doesn't... It actually has the threat of, uh, of falling off the level, unlike the other one. I don't know what it is about this little sequence of U-turns uh, wrapping around themselves at the beginning here, but I really like it. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe it's because it uh, kind of feels reminiscent of uh, Gordian Knot. Because the Ladybug is so much easier to control than the some of the previous balls that I've been using recently, I ended up playing a lot uh, a lot more recklessly than I normally would, which is why I had to kind of slow myself down a bit to get past these conveyor belts here. Pretty much all of the crystals, all the green crystals in uh, the Night Town levels are kind of really obvious. They're not really hidden at all. They're just you know, a little behind uh, some objects or straight in, straight in the obvious path. This music is on as well. I love it. The description of the level wasn't really, wasn't kidding. Like 80 to 90% of it is uh, sloped in some way. The only, the only times it really goes flat uh, are when it's leading into another slope in some other direction. I had a lot more trouble with this S track here than I usually do. Not really sure why. Maybe it's because it's been a while uh, since I since I last played it. I love Night Town. As much as, even though it is a palette swap, uh, I think it has enough of a different flavor to, uh, to Daytown. A lot of that is the music, and obviously because it's literally night here, but uh, Daytown, the background, it, it kind of felt more like uh, it was sort of a kind of businessy place, whereas Nighttown seems a lot more about the entertainment. Those shipping containers, no matter what, even if you just touch them by a hair, will knock you away from them. 
So it's very easy to get knocked off if you don't uh, either get through in one straight shot or stop between them. I think this might be one of the longest levels in the game. I don't think it's the longest, I'm pretty sure there's a level longer than it. But it is pretty long and it, I think it's probably one of the... I think it's also probably got the least amount of walls out of uh, most of the levels. It's a, it's a good sign of the things to come. Look at that, you can see the whole level in the background there. That's a long way to come. This is a fun level. Uh, I wish they could have done a couple more like it. it. The path splits at that drop there. And I think the I think this path is probably easier than the other one. It's just a couple of drops and then straight into a long winding tube that drops you straight out onto the goal. And since that's boring, we're going to take the other path. Which is a quite a, a couple of drops onto this surface, which is reminiscent of one of the earlier levels. And then onto this road which has apparently been partially bombed out. Oh, but this also just leads to a straight drop to the goal. Well, that's boring as well. Hang on, I've got a way cooler idea. That I screwed up, but don't worry, I can do it again. Just one second, hang on. Uh, hang on, nope, hang on. Um, yep, uh, that's... Hang on, I can do this, just... Uh, wait, nope, hang on, nope, once... Yep, 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 that's what I wanted to do because uh, I was just practicing. Yep, I wanted to show how it's possible to go straight through one of those tiny holes from a great distance. Uh, now, onto the goal. It was right there, uh, but I forgot that I can't approach it from that side because that's not fair. So I, I have to do it again. Okay, got it this time. Yep, uh, yep, except that I remembered that I had to do something else uh, so we're just gonna give we'll give it another try here, and yep, straight down. Uh, yep, hang on, one more try. Got it this time. Yep, totally got it, totally got it. Yep, just bounce off of that, and something distracted me, which is why I didn't get onto the goal perfectly. This would be a lot easier if um if the rule about falling for too long wasn't in effect, because then I could just drop straight down onto the goal, but. It's far enough away that uh, it would void me out if I didn't bounce off of something on the way there. Which is why I couldn't drop down in that uh, attempt. If I had gone for too much longer, I was going to get failed out of the level. Just need to get over this lip here. And yep, got it this time. Nope, okay, hang on. Uh, got it this time. Because now I realize if I can go off that one, then I can miss the goal. And I wanted to show you that you can miss the goal if you do that. There are lots of different ways you can miss the goal in this level. It's it's pretty good about giving you all these options. That was kind of horrible. That was probably like a frame away from getting it. Which is kind of annoying. It was so annoying that I'm going to get it perfectly this time. Just to spite the level. See, totally got it. Oh hey, I was wondering when we'd unlock that ball. The panda is another ball that you don't get to vote on. Because I'm going to show it to you right now. See, the panda unlocks if you fail a level, I think, five times in one attempt. And I mean, you fail it as in you get the miss uh, keyword.
The reason it's labelled as super easy and a last resort is because it's, well, it is super easy. It's insultingly easy, in fact. I feel insulted if I ever, if I have to actually use it to beat the level. The, the panda just does not move that fast at all. It has a horrible top speed and kind of just barely, it's really sluggish to move around. I can use, when I'm using the panda, I can just play so recklessly. I'm barely even trying to be cautious here, but it doesn't matter because the panda stops immediately. It stops so immediately that I can do this and get straight back to that checkpoint even though I missed it. It has no, it, does, it just has perfect traction pretty much. So that's enough of the panda. Now let's play the level with the ball that you actually voted for. The ladybug and the marble and even some of the animal balls kind of can feel pretty slow, but compared to the panda, just nothing is that slow. So here we are, on level 45, the final level of the main game. The obvious ending of all of the levels. It's pretty, it's actually pretty simple, uh, since when you break it down, it's just a couple of these half pipes, and then that climb up to the top of the level. The tricky part is that there are no walls uh, on the half pipes or on these little uh, tight ropes, so if you can't, if you're not good at kind of moving the uh, tilting the stage in a perfect straight line, either horizontally or uh, for, uh, forward and back, then it can be pretty tricky to keep the ball steady. Hooray! We finished all of Karonpa on the final level, number 45. And for doing that, we get all of the stages in mirror mode. And we got the Flash Ball, which we'll take a look at uh, some other time, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I will save this time. After all, we finished the game. And since that was the last of the levels in Kororinpa, uh, I guess the I guess the Let's Play's over. Bye!